Hey folks, today I'm going to give you a little demo of Kate Sandra. We're going to see how to uh, deploy Kate Sandra on a Kubernetes cluster, how to run node tool commands and check uh, the Cassandra logs. We'll see how to access CQLSH and we'll run a stress test using NoSQL Bench. We'll see how to check metrics using Grafana and then we'll do some scale up operations on. Stargate and Cassandra, and we'll run repair using Reaper, and finally we'll perform some backup and restore operations using Medusa. So first I'm going to create a cluster on my laptop using Kind. Uh, unlike uh, Minikube, Kind can create uh, Kubernetes clusters with several uh, worker nodes. Okay, our Kubernetes cluster should be up. Let's check that. Some nodes. We have three worker nodes and the control plane. Let's check our name spaces. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is install traffic uh, using Helm. Traffic is our load balancer uh, and reverse proxy for Kate Sandra. And I'm going to use a custom values file, uh, which is available in our documentation. Okay, so now I'm going to install Minio. Uh, Minio is an object storage tool uh, which is S3 compatible and runs in Kubernetes. So I'm going to install it through Helm as well in its own namespace. And I'm going to set some default settings. So uh, credentials, Minayo key, Minayo secret. And I'm going to ask Minayo to create a default bucket named Kaysana Medusa upon install. Okay. Let's now see what we have uh, in the Minio uh, namespace. So we have a pod and we have a service that exposes port 9000. So let's port forward it so that we can access uh, the Minio UI locally. So localhost 9000. And there we go. So we have a Kate Sandra Medusa bucket, uh, which is empty. I still had a cookie uh, on the browser, but this is definitely secured. Now we're going to deploy Kate Sandra. So I'm going to create a Kate Sandra namespace, make it the default for kubectl, and I'm going to uh, yeah, create uh, a secret for Medusa to access Minio. So it contains the Minio credentials in the Kate Sandra namespace. Secrets. Okay, so it's here in Medusa bucket key. And now we're going to install Kate Sandra. So I'm going to add the Kate Sandra Helm repo. And the update command and install Kate Sandra in the Kate Sandra namespace using a custom values file. And I'm going to show you in a second. Let's check it here. We can see that Kate Sandra um, keys namespace is starting to create some pods and services. Uh, so what are we deploying uh, one Cassandra data center with two nodes and custom heap sizes so that it fits on my laptop and one Stargate pod. Uh, we're going to deploy Medusa, we're going to deploy Reaper and the monitoring stack. Good. 
So there we can see that we have two stateful set STS pods, which are the Cassano pods, and one Stargate pod. We have, of course, CAS operator, uh, the monitoring stack, and Medusa and Reaper operators. I'm going to run two commands that will help me know when the deployment is fully done. So this first command will wait for the Cassandra data center object to be ready. And the second one will check the rollout of the Stargate deployment. Well, this is starting. Uh, let's go and check uh, the Cassandra data center resource that was created by CAS operator. Uh, so we can see the events uh, from the lifetime of that data center and the node statuses. For now, they don't have a host ID. Once a node is ready, it gets a host ID. So it seems like one is running. Yep, so you see the host ID that appear here. Uh, and the cluster is still scaling up because we have one node left. And you can see because have our operator progress is updating. Okay, so the Cassandra data center object is ready. Let's check again. Yep, we have two host IDs. And the operator progress is ready. Now we are waiting for the Stargate rollout to complete. Now, Stargate rollout is done. Uh, let's see how we can check our Cassandra logs. So if I try to get the logs from the Cassandra pod, it's going to tell me that we have several containers. So Cassandra, Medusa, and server system logger. So if you're looking for the system log files from Cassandra, it's going to be the system logger. So logs, the pod name, the container name, and there we have uh, our system logs while the Cassandra container can outputs the logs from the management API. And we also have the Medusa container, uh, which shows us that the gRPC server is started. Okay. Kate Sandra is secured by default. Uh, if you don't provide super user credentials, we'll create some for you. Uh, so we have a few secrets that have been created upon install. Resize this. Okay. Uh, this is the one we're going to use for no tool commands and um, CQLSH or well, CQL. Uh, access. Uh, so we're going to decode this username and put it in a variable. And then same for the password. Okay. Username, consumer super user, and password. All good. And now we're going to use those to invoke CQLSH uh, from within the first Cassandra pod. So we're going to run a kubectl exec and then notal. not CQLSH just yet. Let's run notal status. Okay, we have two notes. Let's do the same, but now invoke CQLSH with our credentials. All good. And let's see what key spaces we have in here, Reaper DB system key space says uh, data endpoint off from Stargate. All good. Now we're going to create a job to run a stress test using NoSQL bench. So here I'm going to create a job using the NoSQL bench Docker image uh, and we're going to run a moderate test, 50 ops per second is running on my laptop. And we're gonna 
go through the uh, Kate Sandra DC1 service, which exposes the Cassandra pods uh, directly. Job created. So let's see what we have here. We have a NoSQL bench pod that is currently creating. And as soon as it starts, we're going to be able to check the logs. Follow them. Okay, it's running, and the right command is kubectl logs. Okay, so ramp up, uh, which means that now we should be able to see some metrics. Uh, so let's hop here and go check Grafana. Okay. So that's secured, admin, admin one, two, three. Please change this in production. Uh, Grafana, and then we're gonna go to the Cassandra overview dashboard. Okay, and we see that uh, indeed uh, queries are being ran against the cluster. And we have our throughputs, latencies, node status, all that you need to monitor your cluster. And we also have a more condensed dashboard, which shows just a few of the metrics that are available. Okay, so let's wait for that stress test to finish. And the test is done. Uh, so now we're gonna do a little scale up operation and add uh, two Stargate pods. So I'm gonna update my custom values file, set the number of replicas to three for Stargate, and update my install. So I'm gonna run Helm upgrade and pass the value slot. Okay, so new Stargate pods are creating, and we're going to check the status of this rollout. Okay, our Stargate nodes uh, pods already. Uh, now we're gonna run a repair. And so let's go and check here if we can access Reaper. All good. Yeah, the Stargate nodes still show up in red. Sorry about that. We need to update it. So let's see if we can repair the baselines. And we can add 10 segments per node. Activate it. And there you go. Repair is running. Um, so now we're gonna create a backup. So this is done through Helm as anything else in Sandra. Uh, so I'm going to create a backup named Backup1 and it's going to target our DC1 data center. Okay, so now we can see that a backup object was created in backup one, and if we check its definition, uh, we can see that both nodes have finished backing up. And as soon as you have a finish time here, it means the whole uh, backup operation is done. 
Now let's go ahead and check Menu again to see what we have here. Okay, so now we have some data. Uh, we have two nodes, folders, the backup index. Let's go here. We have backup one. That's all the metadata. Oops. Uh, and if we go back up a bit in the data folder, let's go and see baselines, IoT, and we have some SS tables. Very good. So let's now use CQLSH to truncate that table. So select star baselines IoT. Let's first check that we have something in it. We do. Truncated. We have nothing left. And now we're going to restore our backup. So using Helm again, I'm going to start a restore operation. I'm going to restore the backup one backup. And let's go. Uh, it's going to take a little more time as uh, the Cassandra pods have to be restarted and the restore operation takes place in an init container. Same as for the backup, we have a Cassandra restore object that was created in our Kubernetes cluster. And if we go and check its content, we see that we have no finish time just yet. So the back the restore isn't done yet. Okay, our restore is done. Let's now go and check that the data was actually restored. So next baselines. And there it is. The last thing we're going to do now is scale up our Cassandra pods to add one Cassandra node. So I'm going to change that value to three. And I'm going to upgrade our Helm install using the same command as before. And we're going to see a third Cassandra pod. It's going to be added here. And there you go. So it's going to start up and join the cluster as the others. Uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching.